Hi, welcome back. Thank you for joining me on this one last lesson on determining important ideas using fables. My name is Miss Lee. I teach third grade at McGill McGilbra Elementary School, and I'm so happy that you're here again, that we will be finishing up and wrapping up this section today. Um, these lessons that we've been going through have been focusing on hearing and thinking about our fables while we determine what the important ideas are, and we call that theme. Um, books or stories can have more than one theme, and it's usually a message or a lesson about life that the author wants us to consider as we read it or listen to it to try to connect it to our own lives. Um, today's fable is fantastic. It's a fun one, and I hope that you will enjoy this lesson just as much as I have. We, I appreciate you being here and listening and following along and doing all those steps so that we can learn and grow our brains during this time. Today, we will hear and think about a story, which is our fable today. We're gonna to visualize it to understand and enjoy the fable, think about themes in it, make text-to-text -text connections, read independently up to 30 minutes in your IDR time, and then at the end, write a reading journal entry and give reasons for your thinking. As we know, fables are a special type of story with animals as characters. Um, and with an important theme or a lesson about life. The book that we're working with, once again, is called Fables by Arnold Lobel, and it's published by HarperCollins Publishers. Hi, it's Miss Lee. I wanted to go over the questions that I asked at the end of the first reading of the fable, and that is, what did you visual visualize? What did you picture happening in the story? And how did you picture the camel at the end? Since the first read through was just to understand the story of, and see what's happening in it, and I would ask you to visualize, this is a time if you'd like to pause the video and write these down or kind of think about it, you can. Because now after this, we're gonna move on to the second reading where no longer you're going to be visualizing. Well, of course you can still visualize, but really the next focus will be on what themes that you kind of notice or what you think of in this story. What lessons or themes do you think the author is trying to get the message across to you? And that's what we're gonna do right in the next slide. Please follow along as I read. The Camel Dances by Arnold Lobel. <clears throat> the camel had her heart set on becoming a ballet dancer. To make every movement a thing of grace and beauty, said the camel, that is my one and only desire. Again and again, she practiced her pirouettes her releves and her arabesques. She repeated the five basic positions a hundred times each day. She worked for long months under the hot desert sun. Her feet were blistered and her body ached with fatigue, but not once did she think of stopping. At last, the camel said, now I am a dancer. She announced a recital and danced before an invited group of camel friends and critics. When her dance was over, she made a deep bow. There was no applause. I must tell you frankly, said a member of the audience, as a critic and a sp spokesman for this group, that you are lumpy and humpy. You are baggy and bumpy. You are, like the rest of us, simply a camel. You are not and never will be a ballet dancer. Chuckling and laughing, the audience moved away across the sand. How very wrong they are, said the camel. I have worked hard. There can be no doubt that I am a splendid dancer. I will dance and dance just for myself. And that is what she did. It gave her many years of pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, that was great. And welcome back. Patrick and I are here. We're just discussing the fable that we just heard and read together um, because that was our second read through. And we know on the second read through what we were focusing on, what was the possible themes or lessons that the author was trying to get across to us um, during that time. Now, in this series, we've been asking two questions at the end of it after the second time of reading. And the first question is, what do you think is one lesson or theme in this fable? 
And we always started our answer by saying, I think one theme or lesson is. Then after the first question, there's always going to be a follow-up question. That is, what in the story makes you think that? It's kind of like, what do you think and why? When we started that answer with, the reason I think this is, and those are some easy sentence starters that we've been using to discuss our text. We, as teachers, we always want to know what your ideas are based on what's happening in the story or maybe what the theme is. And then we want to know what in the story made you think that because we want you to think back to the text and give us text evidence. We want you to have ideas and then say, hey, this is what the text said that made me think that. So we really always enjoy when you can bring back the text and give us text evidence on what it is that made you think what you're thinking. We're always interested in hearing that. Um, so Patrick and I were having a discussion on what we thought was a possible theme or a lesson. And I started off um, by saying that we thought, I thought that one thing is that you should do what makes you happy, no matter what other people say to you. Um, it, what The reason I think this is because um, the camel really enjoyed ballet and really enjoyed dancing. And her camel friends, which I'm not sure if they're friends if they say such things, told her that she was lumpy and baggy and just a camel, so she should not do ballet. And so even though those things were said to her in the book, she still did, We, I think a possible theme is still just do what makes you happy, even though other people might say things that aren't so nice to you about it. Um, Patrick then said he wanted to add on to what I'm saying and that he wanted to say that not only he agreed with what I said about saying that you should do what makes you happy, but he wanted to add on to say that it's actually he thinks that it's important to do what makes you happy. Um, and so that and because it's better to try to because it brought her happiness. At the end of the book, it said that her dancing, that she did it for herself and it gave her many years of pleasure. So that was the reason why he thought that because it was in the text that part reminded him that yes, sure, do what makes you happy and what I thought a theme was, but then he thought another little part deeper was it's actually important to do what makes you happy as well because it can bring you lots of years of happiness. Now, as we were discussing that, and I'm me sharing it with you, I started thinking of another possible theme, um, which could be that you should be proud of all the hard work that you put into something. So the camel, it said in the text that the camel um, did practiced ballet movements, did things in the hot sun, her feet were blistered, her body was tired, and she but she put in that hard work to become a ballet dancer. And that's something when you put hard work into something that, that you should be proud. So I think that could be another theme or a lesson as well. Now, as we were talking, you see how we started building on to what one another was saying. And that also it gets more ideas to come through. And that's why we always love hearing what you're discussing. I know it's a little bit tough right now because we might be at home but it's okay to do other things to get your ideas out, whether it's talking to someone like Patrick or Tito, my dog, or even writing it down in a notebook or talking to your family or friends about what you've been reading, because it really gets the mind going to say, here's my idea and here's my text evidence of why that is. We love for you to continue practicing that skill over and over. This is the portion now of our lesson where we're going to make text to text connections. If you haven't stopped to think about the lessons or the theme in the camel dances, this is a perfect opportunity to pause this video right here and think of those things for yourself before you begin and continue on. If you have already thought of some themes and lessons in the camel dances, then you're ready now to make some connections to other fables from this week. So the question here asks, do the themes in this fable, which is the camel dances, remind you of the themes in any other of the fables you heard this week? Let me repeat that one more time. 
So do the themes in this fable, the camel dances, remind you of the themes in any other fables that you heard this week? Explain your thinking. Now this week, the fables that you heard were The Mouse in the Seashore, The Young Rooster, and Madame Rhinoceros and Her Dress. I might make a connection between the camel and the mouse because they both followed their dreams, even though they had people telling them um, that they shouldn't go for that, and they had to work really hard to achieve their goal. I might say that the camel and the rhinoceros are a little bit similar, but not. I would say actually that the connection that I can make is that the camel didn't listen to people and made did what made her happy. Well, Madame Rhinoceros did listen more to other people than what she knew in her heart. And that may, then that the lesson that I can learn from that is that you should do what makes you happy and not listen to what other people are saying. So now this is your opportunity to make some text to text connections. Again, you can share this with those around you or write it down in a notebook or even sketch ideas or drawings of what you're thinking. Make sure that you are saying your ideas and explaining that. Something special about Arnold Lobel's fables book is that he includes a message about the theme at the end of every fable. He kind of tells us what he wanted to get across um, at the end of each fable, but as teachers and adults, we want to know your thinking. That's why we haven't been sharing them until this next slide where you'll see what he wrote at the end of the camel dances. At the end of the camel dances, Arnold Lavelle provides a message about a theme to the readers. He writes, satisfaction will come to those who please themselves. Let me repeat that again. He writes at the end of this fable, satisfaction will come to those who please themselves. So my question to you is, what does it mean to be satisfied? What do you think the sentence means? Let me repeat this again. What do you think it means to be satisfied? And what do you think this sentence means? Whether you're going to share with Patrick or a pet like Tito or someone in your family or friends that you know have also heard or read this fable um, or write it down in a notebook. You could also write your words or draw pictures in getting your ideas out and getting them across so that we can also discuss possible themes that the author thinks. Now, of course, it's different. If you had a different idea of what a theme was, that's okay. But we just want to kind of discuss what we think the author was trying to get across or what he was thinking with this sentence. Go ahead and go ahead and do that now. For the last portion of this lesson is your IDR time. As you read today, uh, think about what you notice about the themes or the lessons in your story. As you do that, you might want to either write down some notes or have it on in, in your brain, because at the end of your IDR time today, you will write a journal entry about a theme or an important idea in the story after your IDR time. This is the final piece, our part of this lesson, and it's our journal entry. So it says, write a journal entry about the book you are reading. Please include the title and the author's name, what the story is about, this is only just a few sentences here, not a full one page summary or anything like that. And then a theme or a lesson in the story and an example from the story that supports that theme. That's where you provide the text evidence or an important idea in the part that you read today and a sentence explain or a sentence or two explaining why you think it is important. Um, you could choose between the last two bullet points or if you'd like to challenge yourself, you could write all of that. Or maybe you had a really, maybe you're at the really exciting part of your book and you have lots to say. We would love to hear your ideas and what you share. Um, again, thank you. This is the last lesson in this time of talking about fables and determining important ideas such as theme. And I am so glad that you are able to join me and I wish that we could be in person and um, we could see face to face and have some great dis discussions. And we know that everyone here is doing a great job and always just trying their best. And we're just, I'm just happy that you are here to share this journey with me. See you next time.